We've seen robot hands in movies and video games for years, but that is no longer some far future tech. Bionic hands are starting to get as close to as good as a real hand, and in some ways, even better. It's reasonable to assume that someday soon, bionic prosthetics could be faster, stronger, and even better than our natural organic flesh and bone. Companies like Psyonic are making this future a reality. This is the Psyonic Ability Hand. It's the highest performance bionic hand on the market. It's tough, multi-articulated, and provides haptic feedback. It's not just about returning functionality, it's about expanding possibilities. To understand just how impactful this is, you need to meet Juan Tsukijo. Juan has been missing his arm for over 30 years and was actually Psyonic's first ever test patient. After pinching for the first time, in Juan's words, he felt as though a part of him had come back. But that was just a prototype, so since then, Adil has made it his mission to bring this technology to market for people like Juan. And thanks to our video sponsor, Henson Shaving, we have some very exciting news for Juan. But we'll get to that later in the video. Speaking of sponsors, I want to make it clear that Psyonic is not sponsoring this video or paying me in any way. I'm just really passionate about the work they're doing, and I want to share it with the world. Adil invited me to San Diego to visit Psyonic and see firsthand the amazing things they're doing for the limb difference community. Thanks for showing me around. This company is incredible. Can you tell me a bit more and our viewers about how you got started in this? Yeah, so this is something I've wanted to do my whole life, ever since I was actually seven years old. So I was born in the Chicago suburbs, but my parents are actually from Pakistan. Okay. And I was uh, visiting Pakistan when I was seven, and that's the first time I met someone missing a limb. And she was my age, missing her right leg, using a tree branch as a crutch, living in poverty. And that's kind of what inspired me to go into this field. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> what are some of the main challenges you faced when trying to bring a bionic hand to market? Like, I think even like, I've, I've heard medical devices are some of the hardest things to engineer because you need to go through all the certification and the testing and all that. Yeah, absolutely. And w when we first started out, and this was some of the prototypes that you'd seen earlier, we would fully 3D print the entire hand. And our first conception was that you know, with fully 3D printed hands, we were going to revolutionize like the entire world. And then after like our fourth prototype, when we actually started talking with hundreds of patients and clinicians, the number one thing that they actually had an issue with wasn't necessarily the cost, it was actually that their their $50,000 bionic hand that's injection molded with, with plastic and machine metal was actually breaking. And not because they did anything crazy, they would actually like hit their hand on a table and it would just snap at those joints. And so we had to kind of figure out, well, if we give them a fully 3D printed hand, they're gonna break this within like days to like yeah. minutes of using it, right? How could we still leverage the low cost manufacturing and, and accessibility of 3D printing while still making this hand like more robust than anything else that's out there? And that's when we looked at soft robotics and we're thinking that um, instead of 3D printing the actual fingers, we could 3D print molds and actually make the hand more resilient like a natural limb is by using materials that were more like a natural hand, like rubber and silicone. And that's why we got this guy and I can like smash this against the table and it's totally fine. Seeing the design of the fingers is amazing, like utilizing spring steel, which if it bends, it's just gonna bend back. Exactly. And then silicone everywhere else and the bit of nylon core, almost the skeleton inside, ends up with this very robust and durable finger. <laughs> and especially like silicone too, it's, that's pretty heat resistant, which yeah. means you're getting some superhuman abilities with this thing too, because you could you could literally pick up something that would n normally burn you. <laughs> and I think we've even like lit the fingers on fire, and it took about eight seconds before it started to melt. So I think that's even more superhuman than our own natural yeah, fingers definitely. too. <laughs> that was awesome. How does it actually attach to a human? Yeah, so this is our R&D control stick just for demonstration purposes, right? And so what a user would typically use is um, what we call a socket. So this okay. is what, what one kind of looks like, right? So if you lost your hand below your elbow, you basically get a cast that's made, similar to like if you broke your arm. And then uh, it's molded specifically to your residual limb. You'd put your arm in here and then you'd have muscle sensors that are yeah, in yeah. here um, to actually control the hands. And, th and this connection point, is this, is this something you've developed or this kind of standard across? Yeah, so this is an industry standard, um, but where we see the industry heading to is more towards that bone integration. And with that bone integration, this is going to become uh, hopefully obsolete. 
The idea is, is that, I mean, this is kind of like wearing a shoe over your arm. So it gets uncomfortable over right. time. You're gonna sweat, and especially when it gets hot. The way that limbs are typically attached is through your bones, right? I mean, that's how your natural right. hand is attached. And so that's kind of what we're working on um, with the military hospital and some of our other collaborators on direct bone integration. So it's taking a titanium implant having it inserted into your bone and it comes outside of your body and then this hand would actually attach directly, directly there. It. Wow. With the nerve implants then with the connector coming through that implant as well. So that's the future, that's man. Incredible. That is, that's <laughs> straight out of sci-fi. <laughs> How do you actually interface with just muscle sensors and be able to control this in different ways to do different grips? Yeah. So our users and our clinicians and their clinicians can access the hand through an app. So it's got Bluetooth on. Oh wow, so you, you can quite literally configure your hand from your phone. Exactly, exactly. This is the future now, right? I mean, it, and that wasn't even avail available like 10 years ago, right? So like with the technology that's coming out now, I mean, you can just program your hand. If you have a software update, you can actually do an over the air software update from your phone uh, wow. to get a new feature on the hand. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, I love the design of it and the, the workmanship, like it's, it's amazing. <laughs> and, and you're able to, you're able to feel the vibrations through yep. the, the, the socket, right, through all the fingers. It's unique to this hand as well, it's the first one to give users touch feedback. Oh wow. We've had our users grab raspberries without crushing them, um, as well as hollow eggshells while blindfolded. And, um, and Sergeant Anderson, our first patient in the US, he told us that he could actually feel his daughter's hand from this. And when he told us that, I mean, that just reaffirmed that that is why we do what we do. So you mentioned affordability before, but how much does this hand cost and how does that actually compare to what else is on the market? So in the US, the gold standard insurance company, which actually covers this hand, is actually Medicare. If Medicare covers it, then typically, most of the other insurance companies will cover the hand as well. So historically, only about 10% of patients could actually afford an advanced bionic hand that was between like forty dollars and $50,000, right? Yeah, that's, that's huge. Right, and that was if you were in the military or if you had a workplace accident. With our hand, we got it at a price point that Medicare would cover. So Medicare typically covers around $31,000 for a hand like ours. Cars. And wow, and that's around that's way less than a lot of the other advanced bionic hands are, which are, can be like 26 to 32,000. And so, when we talked with the, all the clinicians and the patients, they were all like, If you can get a hand that's covered by Medicare, then that's going to be like a huge uh, revolution for the industry because not only do they get the most advanced bionic hand, but they more people than ever are able to afford it. So, this is one of our RD test hands that. I figured you might have some ideas on uh, what you might want to do with it. So yeah. if you want to take it back with you and uh, uh, cool, maybe we can figure out something cool to do with one of our users. Yeah, that'd be incredible. <laughs> this is just this is just asking to uh, add some sci-fi tech to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so James gave me the hand, and I can't think of a better way to show it off than with our community members, specifically our YouTube members and our Discord server. Make sure you become a channel member if you don't want to miss out on opportunities like this in the future. Let's do this. Perfect. So as you see, the instructions are on the screen. Just hold your hand up and it should mimic your movements. See, we'll give it a little bit of time to recognize you. Uh. Oh, awesome. Okay, how is it um, moving the fingers? Is it servos? So inside each of the fingers, kind of at the base, there's four little motors, one on each finger with a gearbox that pulls a linkage down to close the fingers. And then on the thumb, it's the same thing. It just is a second actuator that lets you swing the thumb inwards. So there's just little motors hidden in the hand. So to give you more context, this is a bionic hand that a company gave us from, it's called Psionic, and uh, they're in San Diego. We're making a video with them. And they gave us one to see if we can hacksmith it, so... <laughs> oh my god, this is so cool. This is crazy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's really cool. Oh, sick. Oh, that's right. Oh, I'm actually looking at it right now. So oh, cool. So this video was actually sponsored by Henson Shaving, and we were really excited to work with them because they're a local Canadian company, and their manufacturing facility is just a few miles away. And when we found out we were working with them, it turns out a bunch of employees here actually already use the product, including Bogdan here. Yeah, I saw a bunch of ads on YouTube for them, and I was kind of skeptical at first, but I decided to give them a try, and I honestly love their product. 
I feel like a lot of companies brag about the precision of their products when it really doesn't matter, but in this case, it does. And I think they did an awesome job designing and manufacturing these razors because it gives you an awesome shave. And I think compared to other YouTube channels, we're actually uniquely positioned in the ability of seeing how accurate this is. Yeah. Let me take a look. Sure. That, that's like mm. perfectly lined up. And the gap between the blade and the actual aluminum piece is like non-existent. Oh, wow. Plus use the coupon code Hacksmith to get a hundred pack of free blades with purchase. That's like enough for three to five years. Now Henson is doing something really generous with Psionic, which we'll tell you about at the end of the video. While I was touring the Psionic facility, I met Ani, who works there, helping to build ability hands for the limb difference community. After meeting her, I couldn't help but challenge her to some friendly competition. Enough goofing around. Let's talk a bit more about your history with the arm. And you've actually been working for Psionic for the past month now. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a bit about what you do? I have uh, a background in research. I'm, um, I've worked in a few different like neuroscience research labs cool. at school. So I've been helping like working on like IRB writing, research writing, that kind of thing. Um, the neurotactile feedback that Carlos is also working on. Going to talk to other people with limb differences who are getting fitted for the ability hand and talking to them about the different the different features that I've really liked that have, I've utilized. So, I mean, so you were just at NASA, weren't you? Or is that, we, is that we, NDA? We were just at NASA. I think I could talk about it. Um, yeah, that was awesome. They awesome. they have our um, our hands, so we got to kind of do a little like. Did you ever imagine you'd be working with NASA? I didn't, you know, <laughs> I didn't think that. Yeah, no, that was really, really cool. And that was like my, um, I think that was like the second weekend I was here. So <laughs> I was just like, what an amazing first job. This is great. I was born without my left arm, um, so I didn't wear prosthetics for like 18 years of my life. Um, so I just got fitted for the first time three years ago. I went to my prosthetist and the first step was hooking me up to electrodes to see if I could actually contract uh, the outer part of my arm or the inner part of my arm to open and close the hand. So, so that took a while. That was definitely a little bit of frustration just because I had, you know, never knew um, what it felt like to contract those muscles yeah. before. So how, how did you even... Yeah, so, so my prosthetist took me up to this system. I think it's, it's called a Mayo Boy. Um, and it uh, just has these electrodes that um, hook up to a little box where I can look at my signals. I would go home every day and I would just practice, practice just like, like flexing my, yeah, I would try. Oh, um, no. And so you need to get to a point where your signals are really strong and also really separated. I, I eventually, after maybe a month or two, got really good, clean, like distinct signals. So I was like, yes, I can get a robotic <laughs> hand now. <laughs> Um, so a different prosthetists like fit users in different ways, but mine, I have the, well, you can actually, I don't know if you can see in there, but those are the electrodes that um, oh, yeah, read wow. my muscle contraction. So I have two on this side and then two here, and then there's the ground one back there. Yeah, with your prosthetist, you figure out what the best placement for the electrodes to sit mm -hmm. is, right, to get the cleanest signal to, to read it the best. Um, so just kind of pop it on like that. And then this is where I'll like pull in the skin into my elbow just to get a good grip on it. And then, oops, voila, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three years ago, I had a different hand, um, but I, Recently got the ability hand. Uh, now it's a little bit over a month ago. So, oh, wow. so yeah. So, so, so how, how's it been? It's been great. It's yeah. been awesome. Yeah. The thing that's the most different for me using this hand versus the one that I had before is I was talking to you a little bit about this before, but the uh, touch feedback that I get. Mm -hmm. So, if you yeah, you can feel here that light, um, oh yeah, that, like vibrational sound a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's like interesting. A so notification. It's a lot louder on the, the, the sample. Yeah, hand, but yeah. But that's because it's actually 
it's, it's for you, it's not. Right, right, exactly. So there's pressure sensors in the fingertips and those translate to a vibrational motor that sits in my socket. And so it'll vibrate when the fingers um, have pressure against them. So for example, if I'm picking something up, if I'm you know picking up a mug or something, I'll get like a lot of that vibrational feedback in my socket to know that I am you know, holding that object. Mm -hmm. um, and has and that been a bit of a game changer for like it's function? Been, just like comparatively, it's it's been really nice because I don't have to rely on visual cues as much when I'm mm. using the hand. So we rely a lot on looking at our hand to like keep it in check and make sure that you know it's holding something accurately. So like if I'm if I'm picking something up with this hand or if you are you know grabbing a mug or whatever with with your hands. Um, I like assume you don't look you at it as yeah, much, yeah. right? Like I assume you don't have to like make sure that all of your fingers are grasping it tightly and you're not gonna drop it. You don't have to keep watching it to make sure you're not gonna accidentally contract right. your muscle and, and drop it. But that's something that I do usually with a prosthetic. I, I will, you know, kind of keep my eyes on it, especially if I'm, if I'm in public or there's people around, I will like kind of be like watching it like a hawk to make sure that I'm not gonna drop <laughs> whatever I'm holding. And so with, with the feedback though, it's just like, it's like a confirmation. It just signals to me like, you've got that up you're not gonna drop it it's not gonna you know fall and so what kind of impact have you seen with the ability hand in the limb difference community we recently actually had um, a, f a family reach out to us that will be having a baby soon and they just recently found out that their baby is gonna be born with a limb difference so actually a similar situation to me um, missing shorter left arm just really, really freaked out, thinking the worst, just how is this gonna impact our child's life? Is this gonna impact their quality of life? I feel so hopeful for your child that they are entering the world when they are in the time that the limb difference community is so supportive, just so connected. Um, also the fact that um, where prosthetics are, like the fact that their child could, you know, eventually when it's time for them to um, explore prosthetic options, be fitted for a hand that can allow them to do so many things and not limit them in any way in terms of like activities and all the things that they can do. But I can only imagine that by the time uh, they're ready to get a prosthetic. Uh, just like where the technology will be is gonna be crazy. Now remember that incredible story about Juan in Ecuador? Well, Juan's story is about to change because Adil also runs a subsidiary called the Psionic Institute. And thanks to support from Henson Shaving, we are actually donating an ability hand to Juan to keep. Since Juan was the first ever patient, Psionic thought it would be fitting for Juan to also be the very first ever recipient from the Psionic Institute. This fall, Adil and his team will be traveling back to Ecuador to deliver and fit Juan with a new ability hand. Make sure you follow Psionic for updates. Stories like this are incredible, and I think it's fair to say that we all want to see more of this in the world. Psionic has made the ability hand, and now it's time to scale up. There are currently about 100 users, but Psionic wants to bring their technology to millions, and that's where you can help. You can invest in Psionic so they can increase production and get this out to everyone who needs it around the world. Obviously, there are risks with investing, so make sure you do your due diligence and make the decision that is right for you. But you can learn more at psionic.io invest.